Hi, my name is David. Today I'm going to show you how to torque the head bolts and set the valve lash on a Ford Lehman 120. Uh, the owner's manual says you should do both when the engine is hot. So the first thing I'm going to do is run the engine for 45 minutes to an hour to get it warmed up. And uh, the manual also specifies that before you adjust the valve lash, you should torque the head bolt. So that's the first thing we'll do. So I'm going to start the engine right now, get it warmed up, and then uh, we'll be back. Okay, there are a few things that you're going to need for this job. The first is a valve cover gasket. Um, you can get those at AmericanDieselCorp.com. Uh, their phone number is 804-435-3107. And uh, they can ship that to you. It's not a bad idea to have a few rags and uh, some sort of a solvent to uh, clean things off if you get some oil on something. And then you'll need um, a couple of torque wrenches for the um, head bolts. You'll need one that goes up to 105 to 110 pounds. And then if you're going to torque the uh, rocker pedestal bolts, you'll need one that can uh, torque about 17 to 22 pounds. And you'll need the appropriate adapter, depending on what size your sockets are. You might need a, a step-down adapter from half inch to three-eighths, depending on what size your sockets are. And uh, you'll also need a 15 16 ratchet, socket and ratchet, to put on the um, crankshaft bolt to rotate the engine. And you'll also need... Uh, a feeler gauge. Uh, you'll need one that uh, has 15 one thousandths and 12 one thousandths. And I'll tell you which uh, you use those for in a second. And it's not a bad idea to also have a grease pencil uh, so that you can mark the, uh, the valves that you've already set. And a uh, 7 16 box end wrench for uh, turning the adjusting screw. And uh, this is not necessary, but uh, I like to have a tiny bit of contact cement because sometimes just putting a small dab in uh, one or two places on that head gasket makes it a little bit easier to um, position that head gasket in the valve cover. So those are the supplies you need. I'm going to real quickly touch on just some of the few basic principles of uh, why you want to take why you want to watch, uh, you know, and, and do your valve, your uh, valve adjustment on a regular basis. Uh, it's helpful to remind yourself that a four-stroke engine has four strokes. You have the intake stroke here on the left here, where the uh, intake valve up here is open. The piston's going down, and they're sucking in, the cylinder is sucking in the, the air. And then you have the compression stroke, second one here, where both valves close and uh, the air is being compressed. And then uh, at the top of that compression stroke, you have the power stroke where the fuel is injected uh, right at the top of the stroke. And then the um, burning of the fuel is, your, is your, what gives you the power stroke. And then the last stroke is the exhaust stroke um, the exhaust valve opens, as you can see here, and the uh, piston goes up, expelling the, uh, the mixture that has been burned. It's also useful to uh, remind yourself that when there's no pressure on the valve stem, the springs that are attached to each valve move the valve into a closed position. And it's not until there's pressure on the top of the stem via the rocker arm and the push rod that the valve is pushed down into the cylinder opening it. It's also worth remembering that this is a push rod engine, which means that your push rods are riding on the camshaft lo located down in the lower part of the engine. And as the push rods rotate on these lobes, then it uh, pushes the push rod up and down, uh, resulting in the opening and closing of the 
valve. Here's another diagram of the push rod. This is the cam down here. The push rod uh, rides on that cam, and as it rotates, it raises and lowers the push rod, which goes up to the rocker arm, which as it rocks, it pushes the valve stem up and down, uh, pushes it down, and then the, the spring uh, raises it when the pressure is released. Lastly, uh, incorrect um, valve lash adjustment results in your valves not being open or closed for the proper duration of time, which results in a rougher running engine, a, a less efficient engine, and can result in your valves burning. So it's important to uh, do this on a regular basis. Ford recommends every 400 hours. Okay, the next thing you want to do is secure your engine shutoff, which is your fuel shutoff valve. Uh, when you push the button that actuates this solenoid and shuts off your engine, it pulls this lever here forward. So what I've done, I've taken some wire ties and I've got this lever pulled forward. And that means the fuel is shut off. The reason this is important is that we're in a little while gonna be cranking the engine by hand and we don't want the bloody thing to start. So be sure and do this, it's very important. Okay, the next step is to remove all the screws that hold on your valve cover. Um, so there are several of them, uh, they're very obvious. So just remove all of them, put them in a safe place. And if your engine's like mine, you've got a few grounding wires attached to some of them make note somehow of where they're attached that you can reattach them when it comes to time to put this back on. So, um, and we'll, we'll also remove this uh, breather tube here. So, uh, remove these valve cover screws next. Okay, we've got the valve cover off. Set it over here to the side. And uh, first thing we're going to do before we adjust the valve lash is torque the head bolts. Uh, that's what Ford recommends. So you're going to need a three-quarter inch socket, three-quarter inch socket for these head bolts. And I'll show you in a second, it's very important that you torque them in the correct sequence. I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, if you have not used a torque wrench before, uh, this is the locking screw back here. You unscrew this uh, just like three quarters of a turn is all it goes. And then you twist the handle so that you have the correct setting. It's up here and you want it at uh, 105 to 110 foot pounds. So I just set it to 105. And then uh, you put your socket on here, which I haven't done yet. This is the adapter. And then we'll torque these head bolts. Okay, page 27 of the Ford Lehman owner's manual shows you the sequence that you tighten these bolts. There are about 25 of them. So you can see in the middle there, one and then two, three, four, five. You gotta tighten them in that sequence. It's very important to do it in that sequence. So we'll get going here. Okay, like I said, there are 25 of these head bolts and several of them, one, two, three, four, five, six of them, six of them are outside of the valve cover. So you can see these here. Um, you've got to include those when you look at that that diagram I showed you a minute ago. Okay, the first one is seven from the port rear. So if you orient this with the engine, um, that number one is the seventh from the port rear. So start with that one, then you go to two, then three, then four, then five, and so on. You've got to get hold of this diagram if you don't have it. You may find, like I did, that you've got to have about a three-inch extension on your torque wrench. Uh, it's, pretty, it's impossible to reach these unless you have a short extension on it. I also found that setting this at 105 foot-pounds, it was all I could do to um, tighten it to that. So. I think twice about setting it to 110, but the, the official setting is 105 to 110 foot-pounds. So anyway, um, just follow that diagram and you'll be fine. 
Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is torque these rocker arm pedestal bolts. There are seven of them, and you torque them to 17 to 22 foot-pounds. So you'll need a different torque wrench for that, one that's a much lower torque. There's no particular order that you have to do these in as far as I know. I don't think it's super critical. So I just checked all these, they were all fine. Okay, next step is to take your 1516 socket with a ratchet and uh, position this on the front of the engine so that you can rotate the engine clockwise when looking from the front or if you're looking from the rear, it's counterclockwise. So on my boat, it's easiest to have the handle on the port side of the engine and to push down on it, and that will rotate it counterclockwise. Just get a good light up there in the front of the engine, and you'll be able to find the big bolt, 15 16 bolt that's at the front of the crankshaft, and you'll turn the engine. Again, make sure that you've got your fuel cut off secured in the forward position because you don't want the engine to start as you're cranking it. Okay, page 27 of your owner's manual shows you that when you position the engine as you slowly crank it so that valves one and four, this is numbering the valves, I should show you here, from the front of the engine aft numbering each valve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, just in chronological order from the front of the engine to the back of the engine. So the two valves, of course, for each cylinder, one intake, one exhaust, and uh, back to page 27, it shows you here that when valves one and four open, you then adjust the valves number nine and number 12. So intake, you adjust to 15 one thousandths, exhaust to 12 one thousandths. So we'll start cranking the engine here, and you wanna watch valves one and four. And again, again, from the front of the engine, one and four. The cylinders are numbered one through six, starting at the front of the engine. So we're gonna be watching valves one and four uh, on the first two cylinders. And we want to see when those open, in other words, when they're pushed down into the cylinder, that's when they're open. When you think you've got that number four and one valve completely open, put a mark with that grease pencil here and then rotate it another 360 degrees or whatever it takes to get it back in that position. I'm not sure whether it's 360 degrees or less but this gives you something that's a little bit easier to visually watch. I've now rotated the engine some, that's why it's out of alignment, but it gives you an easier way to tell when that rocker arm is all the way down opening the valve. Okay, I've got valves one and four open. Now check the valve clearance, the valve lash clearance on valves nine and 12. Nine is the intake at 15 one thousandths. 12 is the exhaust at 12 one thousand. And again, we're back here. So nine and 12, 12 is the last, it's the exhaust, and nine is the fourth from the rear. Okay, the uh, number 12 valve, I can get the fueler gauge in. It's a little bit snug, but that's okay. And so I'm not gonna bother adjusting that. It seems like it's fine. Number nine, which is an intake, is a little bit loose. So I'm gonna put the wrench, I've already put the wrench on the adjusting screw and snug that up a little bit. This is quite loose here. Okay, now that we've got those first two valves adjusted, we're going to rotate the engine until valves eight and 10 open. And then we'll, we'll set the corresponding valves over here. So eight and 10, again, go back to this. 10 is third from the rear, and eight is fifth from the rear. Okay, I've now rotated the engine so that valves eight and 10 are open. So now we'll check the clearance on valves three and five. 12 one thousandths for the first one for three, because it's an exhaust, and 15 one thousandths for number five, because it's an intake. I just checked valves three and five, they both need a little bit of adjustment. 
It's also not a bad idea to bend your feeler gauges. It's a little bit easier to get them in. And I've been putting a, a mark on the rocker arm after I've adjusted that valve just to prevent any confusion. Okay, now we're gonna watch valves two and six, rotating the engine until two and six are open. Before you check the valve that you're supposed to be adjusting, wiggle it like this. There should be a tiny bit of play if you've got the correct valve to check the, the tolerances of. So you can just barely hear that. If, if, if there is no play at all, you might want to double check you've got the engine in the correct location. So I just checked 711, number seven and number 11, and they're both, they both seemed okay. They didn't need any adjustment. Okay, I just checked the valves for nine and 12, that is one and four. They needed a tiny bit of adjustment. Uh, so now we're gonna rotate the engine until valves three and five open. As you get used to rotating this engine, you'll be able to see, for example, three right now is higher than the other two. And so this is the one we've got to open next. So as you rotate the engine, you'll be able to see that go down, opening the valve. It also is helpful to put a chalk mark even before you start rotating it. Like this is the next one here. It just gives you a visual reference as you start rotating the engine. You can see those marks widen, and it's easier to tell when this is all the way down or open. It's not a bad idea when you're checking these with the feeler gauge to push down on this side while you put the feeler gauge in over here. That takes out any slack that's in the, in the mechanism there. So, okay, I've checked all these. Uh, a few were slightly out of adjustment, not bad. So now I'm gonna go and uh, remove that old valve cover gasket. Whoever that was that installed that gasket, it looks like they put it in with a bunch of sealant, which is not the thing to do. So I think it's gonna be a little bit of a project to clean out that sealant, but that's the next step here. Oh, and uh, before I forget, remove that ratchet from the front of the engine. Um, and then also undo the uh, shutoff thing that you did here for the fuel shutoff. Okay, I just cleaned the old uh, gasket sealant that somebody had used on this. It was, it was uh, pretty tenacious stuff. Um, what I prefer to do is just put a dab of contact cement on the long stretches between the screws. So on both the, uh, the valve cover and on the valve cover gasket. So I'll let that contact the cement, so just like two spots there two spots there um, and so forth you know one or two there one or two there one or two there and then a corresponding uh, contact cement up on the valve cover let it sit for 15 minutes and then you can slap it together and we'll drop the um, valve cover back on it's not a bad idea to take a little bit of solvent and clean off the mating surface where the um, gasket will sit. Uh, don't put any sealant here. Uh, you don't want to have to deal with that at a later date. So just clean it up so there's no oil on that surface. After you've let the contact uh, set up for 15 minutes, then assemble, uh, lay the, the valve cover gasket into the, um, the valve cover. Uh, you just all you're worried about are these long stretches between the screws so make sure that it's uh, pressed in there and pushed to the outside so now we just go in and we just uh, set this on the cylinder head and put the screws in okay the uh, valve cover should just uh, go on very easily this did uh, then put in all your screws if you had any grounding wires like I did like here uh, Be sure that you attach all those again, and then uh, don't go berserk tightening these screws Just tighten them evenly uh, a little bit go all around several times just gradually tightening them reattach your breather tube and You're all set to go make sure that you remove the socket and ratchet from the front of the engine 
and then uh, make sure that you undo the uh, fuel cutoff wiring that you did then you're ready to go so just go ahead and run the engine uh, it's an easy job uh, every 400 hours so depending on how much you use your boat uh, you'll need to do it that frequently so good luck and, uh, and have fun working on your boat one last thing yeah, to wrap this up those marks that I showed you I put on the uh, rocker arms were really helpful in being able to determine when the um, the rocker arm stopped moving. So I would I, I didn't do that before, but it was very very helpful. You could even put um, a couple of marks. You just put it on the part that that rotates and then the part that does not. And uh, if, even if you had a couple of them, and it doesn't matter when you make those marks in the in the cycle, but they're very very helpful in seeing and being able to determine when that rocker arm stops moving as you rotate the engine. So be sure and get a grease pencil and do that. It helps a lot. Good luck.